On va maintenant euh, écouter un, un grand monsieur. Il est directeur sport monde de Microsoft. Il va vous parler euh, eh bien, pendant une dizaine de minutes. Il s'appelle Sébastien Lincestré, mais je vous demande de l'applaudir très fort. Hello, good afternoon, how are you? Bonjour, um, c'est un plaisir d'être uh, ici. Excusez-moi, mon français n'est pas bon. So I'll do my speech and my presentation, this conversation with you in, in English, if you don't mind. So again, it's a pleasure to be here. And uh, during the next couple of minutes, I want to share with you some innovations that the, not only Microsoft, but the ecosystem is doing, you know, the whole industry is doing. And we will see some use cases on how technology is empowering sports organizations for the fans and for the whole industry. Now, first I want to share a little bit of context on... I want to share a little bit of context on where we are and where we're going to head. So in the next decade, in 2030, the population, global population is going to grow 10%, right? 30% is going to grow the water consumption, 50% is going to grow food consumption. Life expectancy is still going to grow. Productivity is going to grow as well. So with more people, with more purchasing power, with more spare time, what we are seeing is that this war is going to give important opportunities for media organizations. So people need to enjoy. And sports is one of those uh, industries. Now, let me ask you a question. Which is the biggest population in the world? Anyone? China, great. Right. Second, India, US, Indonesia, and so on. But are you sure it's China? I see young faces here. So these are the biggest populations in the world. And certainly you are here because you love sports. So let me show you. These are the biggest organizations. But there are newcomers. There are newcomers. So do you know these two guys? So on your left one, on your left-hand side, who is this? Djokovic, yes, Novak Djokovic. And the other one? Yes, he's sports, who is that? Yeah, so let me show you. That's Buwa Giersdorf. He's the winner of Fortnite. He earned more money he earned more money in winning Fortnite at the, uh, you know, the World Cup, and he's half of the age of Novak Djokovic. So this is a trend that is happening. So when we think of sports, we also need to understand you know, that we are in the entertainment business. Now, if I ask you who's the most followed player on the planet? Who? Ronaldo? Neymar? No. So Ronaldo is number two. You can see on the screen, you know, Blevin, uh, Ninja, Ninja Blevin is number one, Ronaldo number two, and number three is the Indian uh, cricket captain um, with 43 million uh, followers on social, social media. So I know I'm seeing faces that probably didn't know much about Rod Stewart, but he broke the world's record in terms of attendance. He toured around you know, multiple countries in 1994. 3.4 million people attended this concert. Do you know how many was the world's uh, record? You know, it was in February this year. Fortnite again, Marshmallow, a DJ who played the concert, and he got 10 million people, 10 million people attending that concert. So something is, is changing, certainly. And when I speak to sports executives, mostly in the traditional business, right? We talk about the traditional revenue streams like match day, broadcasting, commercials, and also players transfer. But what if we think the business as a digital one? So if you're a sports organization, you have an asset, a strong asset, your fan base, right? It's a social network. So what, what if you think of your fan base you know, in terms of engagement, not only in terms of likes, but also in terms of love and hate. 
In some cases, hate generates a lot of conversation. So think of monetization models around data, think of providing services to them, and think of the sports business as a social network. Also, you know, the most advanced organizations are becoming a content producer and content distributor like, like Netflix. There is a great example that I like, like Red Bull Media House. So more and more you will see that sports organizations will build their own media house internally. Create and create content before, during, and after the match. You can also th think of your business as a gaming company. Clash of Clans, Fortnite, Cut the Rope, you know, Xbox, you know, multiple, multiple opportunities there. And you have to partner properly with, sports, with uh, gaming uh, companies to license your brand and to take advantage of that. And finally, I picked Uber, right? Because you have a fan base and you have suppliers, partners, sponsors. So you can build a strong referral business if you think like that. So my point here is that more and more sports, we need to think sports as an entertainment business or sportainment business. We need to think sports as a datatainment or data business and also a referral business or uberization business model. So you can create new revenue streams, like a fifth revenue stream, and also boost the traditional ones. So let me, let me pause and then share a little bit about the, the use cases. So who are using uh, Siri, Google Assistant, or Alexa? Who are using? Very few, very few hands. So my, my call to action, you know, my suggested call to action to you is that you test this technology. So, it's great, you know, to be uh, to have a, a conversation with these bots. I'm sharing here an example of La Liga, the Spanish league. And more and more, you will see that sports organization in the future they will have their own bot, their own voice assistant, to have a conversation, you know, verbal conversation or type it, but mostly verbal. I want to see. I want to know when uh, Olympique Lyonnais is going to play or PSG is going to play in the next match. So I'll be offered tickets. I want to know more about, you know, the uh, the, for example, the top scorer, and I will get a, a promotion of a jersey. So the, the engagement and interaction with this type of uh, voice assistants is going to grow and grow and grow. And the beauty of this is that you don't have to build one bot for one specific platform, and then for like Facebook Messenger, Alexa, or Google Assistant, or Skype, and so on, with uh, you know one bot framework that we develop. It's called Microsoft Azure Bot Framework. You can create one and deploy across multiple channels. So this is going to change everything. And the new generations, you know, the generation, not millennials, but generation set, they are going to be a, a zero click generation, right? Everything is going to be voice, you know, as you are seeing in the movies, in the latest movies. Now, I've been in Russia last, last year, you know, during the World Cup, and I was lost all, almost every time. And I was asking people, hey, how to get here and there? With augmented reality, today we're working with some organizations, and this is going to be the norm. You will be able to get to your gate, to your seat, you know, showing, no, the arrow is, is telling me to go this way or that way. I, I can also look at my friends, like a Pokemon Go experience. So this is going to happen. Many more uh, experiences for the fans and services for the fans powered by AI. And the management team who's managing the, the stadium, for example, the stadium is going to be a living entity, right? So thousands, literally thousands of sensors, cameras, tweets, you know, all the uh, systems are going to feed centrally. And if, for example, there is a goal, the stadium will, go, will change colors and will adapt depending on the colors of that specific team. In addition, Every single building, not only stadiums, are going to be uh, virtualized. So what's called in the industry digital twins. So you will see and you will be able to you know, uh, find you know, from, the, from the command and control center that we are seeing here, what's, what's the problem, what's going on with that alert, and so on. And then send people like engineers or people can, can inspect wearing those glasses that are called HoloLens and to overlay holograms into the different places, for example, you know, in this pump or the engine and do predictive maintenance thanks to machine learning algorithms. Now the system, you know, is going to automatically optimize places where there's 
spare, spare uh, places that you can you know, place people or, or try to route properly, you know, more properly the, the flow. But it, it also will automatically identify if there is someone that is running in the opposite direction. Here you see the, the crowd flowing in one direction, but it will detect alerts. And this, this is going to be done automatically and you know, serving people. You can get you know, multiple of tweets. And with those uh, tweets, you will get alerts and probably also phone calls of you know, something that's going on. For example, a heart attack. And you can send a drone to help you know, with a defibrillizer, as you are seeing in the, in the video. Now, for the fans that are outside the stadium, there are new experiences that could be uh, that could enjoy everyone you know, using HoloLens you know, devices. You could see a virtual stadium on top of your living room. You can see, for example, an avatar with telemetry. More and more you will see that, are, that, uh, that the experiences for the fun are going are gonna to change. So in this video that I'm showing here, it's a great explanation on of those future, future experiences. There's no time to waste, you don't want this. So I guess you get the idea, you know, these type of devices are going to be lighter and lighter and more massive, you know, it's going to be democratized. And in order to manage millions of funds, every single organization will need a digital platform, a digital platform that ingests data from multiple touch points, whether those are applications, websites, membership programs, social media, ticketing system, you name it, thousands of interactions, both physical and digital interactions. And with that, you ingest all that data into Data Lake in a big da database. You slice the content. You use uh, machine learning algorithms to create scorings, to create the clusters or audiences, you know, and then run campaigns, marketing campaigns across multiple channels. You measure the conversion rates, and then you optimize like a positive feedback loop, loop over and over. But let me show you one example. For example, a club that has in their database, 125 million people. How do you manage that? And you want to run a campaign for those whose birthday is January. So more and more, we can empower the marketing teams to use natural language, artificial intelligence, to tell the computer what we want. In the past, we used to tell the marketing agency or IT, hey, give me a list of uh, customers that fulfill this, uh, this criteria. So let me show you. So I type. Sum of total fund, 124. For January, you know, it's creating the query, 10 million, 10.4 million, who are living in France, 285,000. And I keep typing, you know, I could be also speaking, because uh, Power BI also recognizes not only text, but also speech. And it's creating the query and the, you know, technical query on the back end. You see different conditions, 18 to 40 years old. If I change France for Colombia, for example, instead of 8,788 people, it's going to be 30,000 people. So this means that instead of spamming 124 million people, you can slice the, con you can slice the audience, you can hy hyper-target, personalize the message, and then improve conversion rates and return on marketing investment. There are also great examples. Uh, on how to use uh, Power BI and, and AI to measure the performance of the business. So right from your smartphone, you can be seen as in this example, you know, how, the, how uh, season pass holders uh, is performing. There is a gap between 18 to four, 24 years old. In this case, this is much attendance. There is one ring that is not 100%. So you run marketing uh, promotions and upsell in order to move people down here. You know, there are two bars and coffees that are separated 20 meters from one the other. 
and you can see that one is making 30% more revenue. So the idea here is how to share knowledge between teams and try to grow the business. You see here the online store, everything from your smartphone. Uh, there is a big campaign in May to clean out inventory, but uh, the problem is that it has cannibalized the New Jersey. And finally, social media, sentiment analysis, ambassadors, and so on. So the last example that I want to share around artificial intelligence is around uh, team and player performance. And uh, I like this one because it's bringing, you know, uh, technologies like Azure, um, sorry, it's um, Kinect for Azure that is scanning in 3D and 4D as well, um, you know, your, your foot or your leg. And then it, it provides, a, you know, through 3D printing, it creates an insole or a shin pad and so on. So let me show you the video. Cuando un Fórmula 1 choca, el coche se plega por todos los sitios, absorbe el impacto. Lo que hemos buscado en las espinilleras es lo mismo. Ante una determinada cota de impacto, rompería la espinillera y posiblemente salvaría la tibia. Yo tengo reforzado el, el quinto meta, eh, se me cargan menos los gemelos y los isquios cuando uso sus plantillas. Eso te ayuda también a, a estar al 100%. Believe me, this is true. Big round of applause. Applause. <laughs> so this is a 3D printed uh, insole. You know, more and more we're working with partners at the Global Sports Innovation Center in order to democratize this type of uh, technology. So, you know, linking my, my final comment and to wrap up, basically, if you are a developer and you are creating innovations, my invitation to you is that uh, you join us at the Global Sports Innovation Center powered by Microsoft, you know, because we want to democratize and we want to share more and more of these things with uh, the industry, with funds and uh, sports organizations. So thank you so much uh, for the attention. Uh, merci beaucoup. Au revoir.